done, Doubles. Hey, is this Eddie? Yes, it's me. Hey, Eddie, it's Greg calling you from ASI on behalf of USAA on the recorded line. Mm-hmm. On um, Pascal. All right, I'm going to call USAA with you on the phone. Do you have a moment? We can call them on a three-way call so they can tell us whether or not to allow this. So we can be done once and for all. Okay. All right, hold on one second. I'm on conference plan. Welcome to USAA. Please enter your USAA or social security number. Please say or enter the five digit extent. Your call may be monitored or recorded for verification and quality assurance. You've reached the voicemail for call transferring your call. To route you to the correct claims representative, please tell me the state that the loss occurred in. California. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling USAA. My name is Joseph. How may I help you? Hi, Joseph. It's Greg calling you from ASI. Um, I also have a, a shop, Eddie, with Dent Devils on the line, and we're calling about a mutual customer, and I need some advisement on how to proceed. Let me know when you're ready for the member number, please. Absolutely. Let's be, uh, let's be kind of number. 111 845 77. And this is loss report three for the claimant, Pascal, on a 2009 Toyota Prius.
we've located aftermarket. They want OEM. Here's the price difference. What should we allow? Just right. like I was going to go over with that guy. Whatever okay. their reply is, is now their reply. Okay. They wouldn't want to send anything back to us and everything to USAA. Okay? And I, I've, I've already, I just sent y'all a letter. I don't know if you just got it. It was talking about us purchasing and pre-tax and all that stuff and holding yeah, y'all accountable. I'm not, none of that's Eddie, none of this scares me, buddy. On our estimate, we allow tax on the paint materials and parts. Right, but the I'm problem is this because the, I'm tired of getting your emails. So I'm going to. Well, I'm it tired of dealing like with this. Attention. The thing is, is Toyota, 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 Toyota says that we're not supposed to use I don't these care parts. What Toyota says? You don't. Why is Are that? Toyota. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is Death Devil an affiliate of Toyota? No, you're not. So, so don't you're not going to, so OEM repair, right hang on, that. hang on, Any OEM on. repair <laughs> procedures don't matter to you. If a, a, if Toyota says a car has to be repaired a certain way, you're not going to go, you're going to go against those? So, so because Toyota says that you should use Toyota parts on their car, you think that's the end all be all of what needs to happen? They say yeah, no aftermarket. These yeah. parts haven't been crash tested. They also don't have the same warranties. Read over that paperwork I sent you. I don't, That's, I'm not reading anything you sent me. It's all chasing dreams. No, it's not. I don't, it is. I don't owe you any additional tax when I've allowed tax on paint materials. What are you even talking about? Do you actually on the parts. I purchased like the parts. Do you actually get people that pay you this? Yes, I do. Oh, wow. Yeah, you should keep trying to get it from them because you're not getting it from me. Um, actually, I'll be seeing you in court over this. Whatever you need to get in court, Eddie, I don't care. You don't care. None of that scares me. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. And what's your name again? It's it's on all of the emails that you've received. What is your name again? It's Greg. That's G R E G. Last name is Kason. C A S O. In. Okay. Is there any other information you need from me, Eddie? What's your email? <laughs> Here, I'll reply to yours. This is my email. There you go. Okay. This is my email. There you go. What else? What's your phone number? 800 mm-hmm. 647 mm-hmm. 3626. And my extension is 1225. Okay. Have you read over the Fair Claims Settlement Act? A what? I said, have you read over the Fair Claims Settlement Act? Hey, I'm not getting any of that. Is there any other information you need from me in reference to this claim? It all references to this claim and how you're handling it and dealing with it. It doesn't. I've told you what our stance is. You continue to send it. I mean, I don't understand how you don't understand what I'm telling you. Aftermarket parts apply on this vehicle. What, how do they apply on this vehicle? Is that because... Are you repairing this car? Are you going to hold the warranty on this car? Eddie, concentrate for me for a second. I'm going to explain how insurance works, right? Okay. So either they can have this, they can have USAA repair it, and USAA is going to repair it under their guidelines. There's nothing they can do about that. They are hard to held to certain rules and regulations from the state and the government, none of which says you have to put OEM parts on the 2009. They have so to be like, not. kind, and quality. Listen, Eddie, 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 listen. What? So that's one option. The second option is this customer can go through their own insurance carrier to have the vehicle repaired, in which mm-hmm. case they will subrogate USAA for the loss. You might want to have the customer check with their policy because they're not going to put a brand new cover on the 2009 either. So there's your two options. There was no damage on this cover. I'm sorry? There was no damage on this cover. This cover did not have an aftermarket bumper cover. Okay. I can't warranty an aftermarket bumper cover. They're not the same. They come with plastic overhangs. They've got cheap primer on there. Keystone doesn't warranty their bumper covers the same as the OEM does. You're not paying me to test fit the bumper cover. You told me to test fit it. I get when I ordered the OEM cover, just like I did. We prep it out; it's the way that's told to be. We paint it and then doll it on the car. You were wanting me to test fit the bumper cover. So if I bought that bumper cover and painted it, and it doesn't fit, and it has all the little extra plastic and all that on there, you're going to tell me to eat it. 
Keystone, key, when you read over Keystone's warranty, the issue was whatever is gonna hold them least liable at their discretion, they'll pay us $25 an hour for labor and materials. If that exceeds what we paid off their own estimate, then they'll just refund the money. And then we're left dealing with everything else. That's my issue with it. Do you understand that? Of course I understand it. Did you try an aftermarket cover on this one to verify it would not fit? Keystone, well, no, even if it and doesn't, the problem is, is their warranty is bad. Keystone won't sell to us because we've had too many issues with it, with their covers. I have to be able to warranty my repairs, and because of their cheap primers, we'd have to strip all that stuff off to be able to put my paint system over there. I can't warranty it. Exalta won't warranty us putting paint over the, um, the cheap primer. That's the other issue with it, is I use the best Exalta has. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to send it up to them, and it, if they, it's there, they're paying it, not us. We have to put it in their guidelines, but if they want to give the extra 421, and like I said, I'll detail it out what the differences are. I mean, we'll if a customer, it it's, like if a customer comes in and they want it to save money, I just tell them point blank, it's... If you want me to do this, I'll do it. But I can't test fit, go on and off. Like the new um, Honda Civics, a lot of times those covers will break in the headlight bracket. There's a chrome molding that goes on the Civics. Those will break, so you can't test fit those bumper covers. A lot of the cars are getting like that. And so it's like, for the little bit of money you save on there, you're gonna spend in labor and also in um, rental car fees. I've already had issues with them. That's I've been doing this for over 33 years. No, I mean I understand what you're saying, but yeah. it's amazing. Keys, I know, but the problem is, is, are they in business if their parts are junk? That's weird. You don't find that odd? I was buying parts from them, and we had and we have videotape of it. I have video on two bumpers from them. One was on a IS350 or 250. It was a Kappa certified, and then also on a Yaris. The bumper covers, when you weigh them out, it's a lot lighter. The wheel liners are just, they're tissue paper. On the IS250, it's already pre-primed and stuff with that cheap primer, and there was slag all around. The owner brought that cover to me. It was a Kappa bumper cover, and he wrote me in on a Friday night to help him try to install it. The cover just didn't fit right, and it had all that extra slag. He just brought in another cover, um, I think it was a month ago, a month and a half ago, and he wanted us to do the same thing. I go, dude, don't you remember how bad that other one fit? Because he buys the cheap luxury, or the luxury model, and then he puts the sports bumpers on there. And he goes, oh yeah, because I pulled up pictures and I showed it to him. I go, do you want this same thing? I says, you were complaining to me about this. And I says, you bought the bumper cover. And he goes, yeah, you're right. He goes, I ended up giving that car away to one of my family members. Um, and so with that, he had us order the OEM cover. And that one fit all nice and stuff. It looked nice. It didn't have all the slag. Right. So, I mean, that's my issue with them. I mean, there's a time and place for them. But the thing is, is I have to be able to warranty stuff. And so it's like if I put that cover on there and it doesn't fit right, then I lose all the time and materials and stuff because Keystone, even if they would sell to me, they're not going to back it. We had issues with a Ford bumper from them that they kept sending all the wrong pieces and stuff on there. It was a farmer's job. It was here for, I think it was a month and a half trying to get the right parts for it because of the way they fit. And even when they got the right stuff, it still didn't look right. I mean, this car is very, very clean. The customer had me go over the car and ask me to touch up these micro little places on it. And I'm like, dude, this is so small. You really don't want to touch it up. And he goes, I just want. That's my clientele. They're usually extremely picky. And so on this, it's like I'm doing what they want and what I can guarantee. I cannot guarantee Keystone. I mean, I was happy with their used parts. I would try to find customers 
parts that would be in the same color if they were had no insurance or whatever. Um, they won't even sell me used parts. But the whole issue is the refurbished parts, they won't even send those to San Diego. And these aftermarket parts, they're really not the same. I mean, to be honest, it's like my profit margin is higher on a aftermarket part than it is on an OEM part. Of course it is, yeah. So, I mean, don't you think that I would want to use a product that's going to have a higher markup? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. And for me to Jeffrey, me to deal with this and not put those parts on that I'm going to make a higher profit, don't you think there's a reason for that? I mean, if you I if do. you think about it, it's honestly it's like I'd I'd rather put a, a higher profit if I'm trying to test fit that bumper cover and I have to slot a hole or something and then it fails later. How their warranty works is they'll say that I didn't install it properly or I should have sent it back. So it's like at $25 an hour, including material, I'm already at a loss. We're charging $40 an hour right now. We're actually getting ready to go to $44 an hour on materials right. to reflect my actual cost. When I put in for the, um, the bare plastic prep, those bumper covers, an OEM bumper cover, a bare plastic takes a lot more time and material. Like where they try to pay the base is 0.5 on there. Um, that doesn't even cover my actual material cost for the sealers and stuff. When we go to mix these colors and it's like, we used to get a lot more for color match for the basic and what that there's through the DEG, the 0.8 is actually for grabbing the color and, um, mixing the toner. So you get up to what they would call like a factory pack color. It's different than matching the color and then what, like say our operating system goes, it's to mix the paint and that's to actually just to grab a pre-mixed factory pack paint and pour it in your gun. And same on parts where it says, um, when we're doing detrim times, it's on an undamaged car to pull say a fender off and put it right back on. When you're doing these aftermarket parts or even the OEM parts, you're actually supposed to be charging and getting paid for um, to test fit. We did a Challenger that had fitment issues uh, that we pre-painted the fenders and went to install them. It was the fenders were bad. And those were even the OEM ones because they got squished in shipping. The guys at Keystone wad up the parts, they toss them around, they don't come in boxes. And that's even your what they call them the factory overstock parts. Those are parts that have changed that you might not see that they're damaged, but they have slight issues where they got rejected on the line and stuff. So, I mean, there's a whole reason why I fight on this stuff. It's just, I know firsthand because I'm the tech putting them on. I'm just a small shop and I'm trying to make a little bit of a profit that is extremely hard to do and to put out a good product where when a customer shows up, I'm not going, wow, is this guy showing up because he's got an issue or is he showing up because he's got new damage that he wants me to repair? I don't want to constantly be worrying about that and feeling bad. So, I mean, back on the parts, that's why I don't use them is one, they won't sell them to me. And even if they did, I still wouldn't want to use them because of fitment issues. But if some customer off the street came in and an old beater or something and they say, Hey Eddie, I just need a cover you know, really don't care, I'm not gonna be picky. Okay, that's fine. As long as you understand that cover might not fit properly, it might pop off. Like the Yars cover was really thin. And so if we put that on, it'd be popping on and off. I'd have to glue it or something and that's not proper to glue it in. It should just be able to paint, paint it and snap it in place like I did with this um, Prius cover. So, I mean, that's my whole, I'm not trying to be a dick on this. It's just, I want to put out a good product I can be proud of. No, understood. All right, I'm sending it up now. I've got everything listed out, the total dollar amount different. And as soon as we hear back, I'll call and let you know. Okay. Thanks. All right. Yeah, bye. All right, bye.